thank you Mark, for the presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, <laughs> all, all that uh, is here. And uh, so sorry for the inconvenience, uh, the problem, technical problems here, but okay, this happened in this situation. <laughs> so, um, as I'm up to say, I am Laura Benitez, marine biologist, and um, this presentation I, I called is the Azores a match point for humpback whales in the Atlantic Ocean? We will try to answer uh, this uh, here in this presentation and just to um, do an approach uh, of, uh, of it. So, okay, mm, first I will talk about a bit about the reproduction and uh, some basic aspects about the humpback whales ecology and more in detail about what happened with humpback whales in the Azores Islands. So, uh, humpback whales, uh, uh, the pregnancy of humpback whales takes like uh, between 11 to 12 months and their breeds feeding uh, between 6 to 12 months and uh, humpback whales have, have a calf every 2 to 3 years. This is important to understand because in the Azores um, we have a kind of mix of a situation of this species, so I, I will talk more uh, later on. And the adults uh, is like a, a 18 meters length and can weigh like 40 tons. And the newborns, um, it's about three to, to, to five meters and 1.5 tons. And this is like, a, a, a looks like a, a newborn. This picture is not taken in Azores, it's, a, it's in, in Colombia and the project that I, um, I am part of it. Uh, so in the breeding grounds, uh, sorry, it's not, ah yeah, the, the next one. Okay, in the breeding grounds, <laughs> in the breeding grounds, uh, the humpback whale looks like, uh, like that. And you can see it's a very, very tiny uh, whale just right to their, to their mother. It's so cute uh, by the way. And uh, the newborn looks like a, with a bent dorsal fin. Is the way that you can uh, identify that it's a newborn or it's not a, a big cow or a juvenile. Okay, this is another picture where you can uh, see the difference. So, for example, in the left side, you can see a picture with the oil, uh, from, from the breeding grounds, and the patterns of colors are uh, not very uh, well defined. Okay, and uh, on the other hand, Azores, this is an example of picture from here. And you can see uh, that uh, the, the patterns is well defined. But this is a discussion that I have uh, talked with my colleagues in Colombia and also in Chile and in other parts of the world, uh, such as Australia, uh, because I, I asked I ask them, uh, OK, in Colombia, we see the calf like that when they are, uh, they are newborns. But here, this calf is uh, almost juvenile. How, how is So Juan Capella from Chile told me, um, for me, I think it's a juvenile because in the feeding grounds it's uh, already big. And from my uh, colleague from Colombia said, no, I think it's a juvenile. So in a certain case, a kind of mix that we are trying to understand what is going on here. And uh, okay, another important thing is to know uh, who is who, males and female. How can we difference uh, or to find the difference between them? There is not a huge difference when you are in the field trees or on the sea and to see and to define, okay, this is a male, this is a, a female. And the way to, to know it is, or just to take a sample uh, with, uh, to analyze in a genetic, uh, with genetic um, uh, studies or uh, to see when they show up, uh, when they breach um, the difference. So uh, here in the, in the left side, we can see the ventral pleats and as soon uh, below to the ventral pleats, uh, you can find the omblicus, okay? And then the male has the, the genital opening closer to the belly than the female. The female is, uh, is uh, more um, uh, behind and right, just right to the, to the, to the uh, uh, opening, genital opening is the hemispherical lobe, okay? Uh, this is only present in females. And uh, in Azores, we have we could recognize uh, this in picture that we have taken, and uh, we can see here uh, the, the difference. Okay, uh, this is the carina, in the in uh, which is almost uh, close to the fluke, and uh, after that the anus, 
and then the hemispherical lobe, which is only present in females, and then the genital opening. Okay, we, uh, um, uh, after that, I would like to explain more about the social structure that we can see in the breeding grounds. Why? Because in Azores, uh, we, we see different types of groups, uh, uh, like, uh, for example, mm, yeah, like that. Uh, in the breeding grounds, we can see a type of groups like uh, one adult, okay, uh, two adults, or three or more adults. If this one adult could be a female, could be a male, could be a even male is singing, but we don't we don't know. And uh, what happened is, uh, as you have seen here in the Azores, uh, whales are more uh, are not so, as much are not social as much as uh, odontoceti, for example, okay. And they uh, create uh, not really stable groups, but the most stable one is the calf and the, uh, the the female and calf. The other one can change; all they do is change. But the the important thing to realize is that, that they create make groups, okay? Uh, especially in the breeding grounds. In the feeding grounds, they don't create these uh, small groups; uh, they they create uh, big ones uh, in order to feed and to cooperate together for feeding. But in Azores, we have seen this. This type of groups, one adult, calf, and juvenile, uh, ju uh, female and juvenile. So, uh, okay, uh, the the type of groups with calves are, are uh, made by um, females and calf, female calf and escort, and female calf and two or more escort. These groups are present mainly in breeding grounds. Let's see what happened in, in Azores. I will uh, I will tell you more. Uh, about behavior that we have seen in the Azores. Uh, and in, in Azores, we have seen two types of... of uh, the why Azores is very interesting, because we have a mix of this uh, behavior. Uh, in Azores, uh, we have seen behavior from the breeding and the feeding grounds. Uh, such as, for example, the, the blow, which, of course, always will happen. Uh, just to explain that uh, most, most of the time, they are, they are on the surface between one to three minutes. Could be could be less, and the average I've been is between three to five minutes. But depends on the behavior and, be, and depends on the the, the 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 individual. If the individual is singing, they can stay like a ten minutes or forty minutes uh, uh, on the water. But uh, if it's a female, it could be fifteen minutes. And if the female is quiet uh, and calm, uh, can stay more or less like that. And the, and the babies of cows, they for sure are will stay less than five minutes because they they they, they cannot breathe um, as as the adults uh, do it. So another another behaviors um, that we have seen here is the spectacular breach that when everyone scream <laughs> of emotion is is kind of amazing uh, things to see on the ocean is the breach. Okay, the tail bridge or the peduncle, peduncle and tail slap when they are hitting the water, the pectoral slapping, or just when they dive and show up the, the fluke. And this is the time to take the picture for photo ID. And another uh, mm, uh, behavior is the feeding, when they are feeding. And this is uh, very important to, to highlight is because in the feeding ground they as I say, they create make big groups, okay? But here, no. Here we you can see just one or, well, or two individuals feeding, and this suggests something that I will I will tell you. Okay, another behaviors that uh, maybe we have not seen yet in Azores, but we have to be very attentive because this happen only in breeding grounds. Is the competitive groups. When they are it's very aggressive behavior, they um, they, they they make uh, like a strong sounds, and even they can get red spots when they are fighting each other. It's very aggressive, and they are most of the time on the surface. It's good like a four, five, six individuals, and um, if he, if this thing happened in Azores, something is going on about the reproduction because they they this means uh, that. And another one is the spot hop, just to locate uh, where they are. Okay, so 
more about uh, what do we know about humble whales in the Azores Islands? Okay, uh, first uh, let's put in context where we are. We are uh, uh, here in almost in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and the species is around the world. Is, there, are, there are not almost boundaries for them and they stay most of the time in the pole areas for feeding and then they migrate from here to the tropical areas uh, for breeding and, and giving birth. And we are here, this is the Azores and we, I will focus especially in São Miguel which is the, uh, belong to the eastern group of islands uh, here and uh, I will talk a bit about Pico which is belong to the central group of islands. Uh, okay, where did the, the humpback whale who passed through Azores uh, belong? Uh, belong to the, to the population of North Atlantic uh, um, humpbacks. So uh, the, the important here, thing here in, in this map is um, that we, we already found much between Cape Verde and Norway, which is the feeding and breeding ground. And, um, and also, uh, another researcher has found a match with Newfoundland, which is in Canada. But what about the other part of the world? There are, there are links between them. This is the most, the one of the important things of Azores. It's almost in the middle of these old uh, um, places. And uh, maybe for a stopover, for feeding, for resting. What is going on here? And uh, uh, um, uh, a screenshot of uh, a research made by University of Norway, where they have found the, the next slide, please. Uh, they have found um, uh, through the tagging the waves where they migrate to, to where from where. And um, the zoom here next to this uh, is like two of them pass through a source. Uh, and will be very interesting to tag in uh, or to do uh, these tagings as well here and maybe to create a bonds of um, uh, with another researchers. Okay, uh, this is only that I already talked, like this is the first time that uh, another uh, colleagues uh, with, uh, who worked before here in, in Futurismo uh, found the first match between these two pla three places, and this was the, the individual, which is the MT002. This is the second individual of the catalog that they started, and I update this year. And but before uh, to to to, uh, to explain more, how do we collect the data? Well, Futurismo have uh, collected the data over the uh, last uh, 12 to 13 years, and. Uh, taking advantage of the trips for whale watching and uh, take the opportunity to take all the data that we can we can do it like uh, behavior gps location uh, acoustic data taking pictures for photo id catalogs uh, well many and the one of the good thing is uh, uh, the several points of the land uh, there are there are locales in several points of the land to help us to find the the animals because it's, it's not always easy and this is a map that I make uh, from the distribution um, to make to show you the distribution of the different type of groups that we have found here in San Miguel. There is not a really pattern. Uh, maybe here in the middle of the San Miguel, and uh, most of the types are composed by uh, one adult. And there are not um, or individuals or animals in the other side of the San Miguel. No, because there are not. It's because we have not made uh, so much effort there in this part of the island. So we have to, to do it more. So one of the good results in this year is that we got uh, almost one, 100 humpback whales, which is a good news. It's a still very a small catalog, but a really huge contribution to understand all the patterns uh, of uh, this uh, species in the Atlantic uh, Ocean. And this um, this is just a screenshot of the of the catalog that I update in these three months. It could be very could be seen very simple, like oh, okay, this organized by the the flux and also by the dorsal right uh, and left dorsal fins. And 
could be like, okay, uh, it's like that, but it's a hard work. You have to organize all the metadata behind that to compare everything. Uh, some individuals are not really easy to, to identify, especially if, if you don't if you don't have the, the tail to compare the dorsals are, are more difficult, and I will tell you why. And um, but the good thing is, uh, humble whales is one of the most easy uh, uh, whales to for to identify uh, because they they have a really um, pattern, a remark pattern. And um, from the most white ones to the black ones, and in the we have every every fluke, and the most common one is the second one. How to do it with, with the with the picture that I already showed you? And um, one thing that I want to say and to highlight is the dorsal fins. No, no many researchers uh, take into account the dorsal fins, but I think it's very important because you don't always uh, see the, the fluke and when you wait with the dorsal fins. And it's hard, I know, because many of them are similar, but not impossible to compare. And this is another result of the photo ID. Uh, this is the recitance in Sao Miguel, which has been seven, seven times in Pico 12, uh, in Tercera 1, in Cape Verde 14, already 14, and the feeding ground 6 and 10. And uh, the remarkable thing here is to say that uh, they have they have uh, recited uh, uh, almost 70% in San Miguel of the recycling has been um, in the same year, which should suggest that the humble whales stay here for some time. So it's, a, it's another question, interesting question to answer. Why they stay here so much time? Just resting, feeding? Hmm? And uh, another thing that I could uh, get it was the type of groups. Which type of groups we have in town in, in Azores? So the most common one was one adult, and uh, also uh, um, groups with uh, composed by juveniles and cows. Maybe this is the thing that we still need to know. And here in the in the second slide, okay, could be it could be a little bit confused. Uh, because we are still trying to understand what happened here uh, in this island. So I will explain. The, in, the, in this graph, uh, I, I am trying to show or uh, to understand the migra migratory patterns according to the social structure, because it's not the same. It's not the same if he, through the Azores. When they are migrate, migrate uh, from the breeding grounds to the feeding ground, it's not the same that one adult is passing over here or one juvenile, because maybe one uh, juvenile needs more energy. And that's why it's here. And um, and also, uh, yeah, well, on the other hand, uh, is the other uh, moment of the year where they don't, they don't stop here. And maybe it's because they don't need so much feed, uh, food uh, to to go to the to the breeding grounds. Um, but uh, um, also the, the the type of groups of of uh, parts over here, it's composed, but uh, uh, a calf, uh, sorry, a juvenile, or an adult with juvenile, maybe because need more, uh, they need rest the, to stay to stay here. Mm, I want to say something before to keep going according to the with the photo ID photo identification, which is really important, and it's um, less than something, less than about people, less than about the countries. Uh, why people, why the government needs um, to know a uh, photo ID for everyone, uh, sorry, is to ID or passport or something like that, or uh, to know how many adults are, how many children, how many young, because pe uh, the government needs to supply necessities, okay, the health, education, and everything. So something similar happened with ways, with these animals. We need to better understand them in order to protect them, in order to give a solution, a strategic solution, um, to to conserve it. So if we protect the places, we it's a for sure it's a safe place for them. So that's why we need we need we need uh, uh, we need this catalog. We need to collect data for them. Okay. Um, okay. This. Uh, temporal pattern, this is another result of, uh, uh, but not for me, it's another colleagues that already were here, just to support the idea that 
the main season, the main season uh, is in spring, in the spring moment. Okay, just uh, finishing um, for, for finish. But despite of that, we still know uh, so few about humbleweeds. Even around the world, it just we know is the the most the species that we have most um, studied. Okay, and we know probably five percent or ten percent, and that's why we need still to answer more questions. Even here in Azores, which is really important place. Like uh, how long stay here in Azores? Who migrates to which feeding uh, or breeding ground? Uh, do they migrate also the less known areas like uh, Caribbean island or Canada or the Gulf of Maine? There, uh, do they have uh, satellite uh, site fidelity? They do they sing here? This is very really important question. If they sing here, it suggests that maybe they're in a, in a reproduction moment or not. Actually, in the feeding grounds, they are start, the researcher has start to record the songs as well in these places, or to analyze the social sounds as well. So it will be really uh, nice to do it in the spring moment. Um, or if the oceanic, uh, oceanic variables influence in the presence of, of compass here. OK, many questions to answer. But let's work together. I think this is the most important thing to say uh, because we cannot work on uh, alone. What I mean is um, we need to, uh, the, uh, whales, the Tyson, they don't have borders. And they can go around the world as you already saw it. If we, if we don't work together, we can understand. We just can't protect one place, but that doesn't make sense. We have to protect all the places. And we have to understand. So that's why it's really important to uh, create these bonds uh, with, for example, Moniset, which is another uh, project, good project where Laura is, is working now. Laura is a biologist for everyone who is there, <laughs> who work in, in Futurismo. I will talk more about <laughs> here. And, um, and another when watching companies, of course. We, Futurismo has only one part of the big cake. So we have to make the, all the cake. Okay, uh, to do it better. So, okay, I want to thank <laughs> to to all of you for the for the support here. I am so happy to spend this time uh, in this moment, and um, and I want to to thank to the front office girl to the skippers and the, the back office, social media. And uh, this is, this picture is the first time that I was here. And I want to uh, thank especially to the ma behind um, masterminds of this company, which is Rui and Ruben and Carlos. Thank you very much. They are here <laughs> for people who is there. Uh, and also uh, a Laura. Laura Gonzalez, who opened the doors for me to stay here, to give me the opportunity to have this experience, that, that, which I will never forget. And, yeah. and uh, this is the, the biologist team, uh, who, how I was, with Rafa, Lucas, Geo, Karin, Maria, well, all of you. Uh, OK, this is without mask. <laughs> the good moments that we spend here, not only on the sea, or as well in the forest, uh, good time, the birthday that we have yesterday with love. And thank you very much. Muito obrigado por su atención. Y ya, pronto. Thank you very much for everything, for listening and Hope uh, you have, uh, hope you enjoyed Laura's presentation. Uh, we are going to start now the Q&A session. We still have time in this session. So if you have any questions for Laura, please, you can just uh, use your camera and ask her directly or um, use the comment sections to ask any questions that you need to, uh, that you have to. Pero, sí. uh, okay. Okay. Ay, 
No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, if any of you have a question, you can put, you can, you can write a question on Facebook as well. I can answer there or Instagram, the social media. Well, feel free to to ask anything. This this video will be is already recorded, so people can also see it later on. Ah, okay. Okay, wrap up thanks for your question. Well, depends. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. The question of Rafa. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Rafa. Uh, uh, Rafa says, Laura, for the photo ID, do you use any program or you just analyze all the photos one by one? Yeah. It depends, no? Uh, for the, the, the one that I did uh, these three months, it was one by one, just comparing because the, the catalog is always small, okay? But when it's a lot of information, for example, in Colombia, I belong to an organization, Fundación Yuarta, has been more about 30 years in Colombia, is the pioneers of uh, this uh, uh, research, and 30 years is huge, it's huge data. So I will try to use a machine learning to analyze it and as well to use a, a good um, platform, which is Happy Way. And this is another uh, objective that I have with Laura, is to put uh, our catalog in Happy Way in order to compare another area. Happy Way is a powerful tool um, to, 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 to create the match, to find the match. Okay, for example, this month, in the past months, we, just to try to bring an example, I re uh, uh, they found a match uh, between the Mediterranean Sea until the Caribbean island, which is really huge. What is doing a uh, humpback well in the Mediterranean Sea? Who knows? And yeah, this is basically, okay, Mariana, thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, for homebag, we need another kind of hydrophone, right? Not really, no. This hydrophone is perfect. I think it's perfect for, for uh, recording. And uh, I think the way that you are doing, uh, look, uh, uh, for, uh, for what? Direction. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect as well. It works uh, very good. And uh, it would be nice to use uh, um, programs to see the, the songs and to analyze it because one, one important thing is um, Humbugs has a, the most complex sound uh, on the nature. And they make a song like a, an artist, like a singer. Uh, it's, uh, it's begins and finish. And the units is uh, the words. I mean, the words for us is for them is the units and the units uh, create a phrase and the phrase creates a paragraph, and the paragraphs create the whole the song. And all the song change the part of the population. So we can uh, infer if this uh, way in Azores is singing like that, like, um, let's say, um, uh, in Brazil, for example, <laughs> in Brazil, sing Bossa Nova and the Azorians as well. Oh, maybe this way belongs to there and no to Cape Verde, for example, because in Africa they sing different, you know? So it's the same in Colombia sings, I don't know, Vallenato, which is a singer <laughs> there, and in Brazil and Martin, in Australia, and in the United States, this country, the West is, for home, home is the, the same. And yeah. Ah, okay, Rafa. I have all led, uh, I, I see. I have uploaded the tale of the animal we saw in January 25 uh, to Happy Well, but until now, not much. Uh, I have to check it because it's uh, still, we are still, um, we have not done uh, this thing yet, but uh, I will check it. Uh, yeah, I remember this uh, animal. Yeah, yeah. This whale is the one well, I can. I asked that because the frequency of humpback whale and sperm are different. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Obrigada, Mariana. Obrigada. Do, do you have any questions here? Ruby, Ruben, <laughs> Karin, a mamá y Karin. Tu mamá a su lado. 
Okay, I think now any of you have more questions? It's okay. Okay, so thank you very much everyone. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed Laura's presentation. So if you don't have any questions anymore, thank you very much and uh, just have a, a good day. Thank you. <laughs>